Hi, sixth grade. Just want to jump on to YouTube real quick and show you how to do Punnett squares. And I just want to make sure you thoroughly understand this. We are going to be looking at page 320 in your reading book. So pull that out if you need to pause the video and go grab that. Go do that, please. Uh, we are looking at the purebred tall pea plant and the purebred short pea plant. I can see that my tall is signified by a capital T, capital T. And I can also see that my short purebred pea plant is a lowercase t, lowercase t. So that's what denotes them, and that's how we're going to fill in our Punnett square. So if I look here and put on my square, I'm going to put my tall on the top, capital T, capital T, and then my, my short one is going to go on the side right here. So lowercase t, lowercase t. I'm going to change colors for a second. So how I fill this in is my t um, capital is always going to go in the first, um, go first, and then my lowercase. So I'm bringing that capital straight down. My lowercase is coming right here. I'm going to do the same for this one, bring this down, and then bring my lowercase again over. Okay, I'm going to again do that on the bottom. So I'm bringing my capital T down. And then my lowercase t is coming right here. Again, with the last square, you're doing the same thing. So we can see that's how we're filling in our Punnett square. So we have our capital T's crossed with our lowercase t's. And then this box is showing um, the offspring of our dominant gene. So if we look at this square, how many offspring shown carry the dominant gene? Well, we would answer all of them do because remember our dominant gene is the tall and we can see the tall is in all of these boxes. Would these plants be tall or short? Say your answer out loud. Good job if you said tall. Tall is right. If both dominant and recessive genes are present, the dominant gene will be expressed in this phenotype. So we're seeing the tall one in this. We're gonna go ahead and do another example. Okay, we're looking at the hybrid tall pea plant Punnett square. So if we look at that, we can see um, what letters represent our parents' genes of the hybrid tall pea plant. We can see that we have capital T, lowercase t, capital T, lowercase t. So again, we're going to fill it in the same way we did last time. We're going to put our capital T. Now we have both of these have capital T's, but we're still going to, if it was two different ones, we would put them, um, the capital T first, but it doesn't matter for this one. And then this one, we're going to bring our capital T over. Our lowercase t is coming down. Again, we're going to bring, let me switch colors for you. Uh, we're going to bring this capital T down and then lowercase t. And then now we have two lowercase t's. So lowercase, lowercase. So what do these letters tell us about the parents' genotype? So that both parents are hybrid pea plants and they each have one dominant gene and one recessive gene for height. So if we were asked a probability question for this, what would the probability of the offspring um, that show the dominant trait? So again, our dominant trait is what, boys and girls? If you said capital T, you are correct. So we have a dominant trait here with the capital T, dominant trait, dominant trait. So we can see that three out of four is what it would be. So we can see one, two, three out of four because our other one is not. So that means if I had three out of four and going to your math class for a second, what would that be in a percent? We know that would be 75%. Okay, if you put three over four, you could figure that out as a percent. Then what would the probability that one of these new plants would be short? So we only have one that's short, and we can see that right here. Oh, goodness. Let's try that again. There we go. We have one that's short, so the probability for a short would be one out of four. So that means percentage would be what? Let me hear it out loud. If you said 
You are correct. Okay, so that's what we're looking at for those. Let's run through another example. Okay, so now we are looking at our purebred for Widow's Peak. We're on page 321 and our hybrid for a Widow's Peak. So first of all, what letters represent our parents' genes? And we know for purebred, it's capital W, capital W. And then for our hybrid for the Widow's Peak, we have capital W, lowercase w. Okay, so now we need to fill in our Punnett square. And I know that you can see that it's already done for you. Just want to make sure that you completely understand how we're filling this in. So we're going to bring, again, we have capital and capital. So it doesn't matter. We just need it to go in this square. We're going to, again, bring this one down and bring that one over. So again, capital, capital. Now to this square, we have a capital we're going to bring down. And then we have our lowercase. And then again, the same one for this one, capital and then lowercase. So now looking at this, what is the probability that the offspring will show a dominant trait for having a widow's peak hairline? So again, we're looking for that dominant trait. Remember that was our capital. Let me switch colors for a second. And we're gonna look at this. So we have capital, capital, we have a capital, capital, capital lowercase, but that capital trumps it. And then again, the same thing here. So how many out of four have the dominant trait? What do you think? Oh, good job if you said four out of four. So four out of four have our um, dominant trait. And then that would be what percentage, guys? Oh, good job if you said 100%, you're getting it. Good job. So this is showing you how we are completing these Punnett squares and how I'm getting the probability to do this. So this should help you when you're working on your homework tonight, refer back to this video and you can see um, how to do this exactly of the Punnett square. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Thank you. Talk to you guys later. Love you. Bye.